So it, it's really very hard. I think most gastroenterologists now purely do GI. And so we really insist that our patients, even if they're young, have a primary care provider who can help them uh, both with healthcare maintenance as well as to address some of these complications. We, as a gastroenterologist, I would like to make sure they know what they need to check, including bone density exams or skin exams, but it's really beyond our purview to do them ourselves. So it's very important that their treatment team are all in agreement. And so uh, when I see a patient with inflammatory bowel disease, I do like to do preconception counseling. So I will tell them when you plan to get pregnant, whether it's male or female actually, uh, when they plan to try to conceive, we ask them to come talk to us first to review their medications and their disease activity. It's important that they're on medications that are low risk in pregnancy and that their disease is under control because if their disease is active, they're more likely to have complications or infertility. And then uh, we also make sure that their obstetrician is comfortable continuing their IBD medication in pregnancy and that their pediatrician is aware of what complications to look for in their newborn and also aware of the breastfeeding safety of the medicines that they're on. So women with inflammatory bowel disease compared to the general population for the most part have the same fertility rate. So their ability to conceive is the same as someone else their age unless they've had surgery in the pelvis. So a woman who has had their rectum and colon removed may have, uh, will have more difficulty conceiving on their own and may need in, um, a reproductive endocrinologist. So you should be aware of that and if they're unable to refer them quickly. Uh, once pregnant, they are more likely to have preterm birth, low birth weight, and complications of labor and delivery. So I recommend that all women with inflammatory bowel disease are followed as high-risk obstetric patients. We had three presentations here, and they're all part of one big registry. And this is a piano registry, the Pregnancy and Inflammatory Bowel Disease and Neonatal Outcomes Registry. So this is funded by the Crohn's Colitis Foundation of America and is run through the CCFA Research Alliance. So 30 inflammatory bowel disease centers uh, across the United States have banded together, and we at UCSF are leading this effort. And we have, over the course of seven years, enrolled over 1,300 women with inflammatory bowel disease who are pregnant. And we divided them into four groups. One group is unexposed, where they're not on biologics or immunomodulators. Another group is azathioprine, 6-MP. Another group is biologic therapy. And then the fourth group is a combination of azathioprine and biologic therapy. And we followed the women throughout their pregnancy and then the first four years of the baby's life. And what we found is that based on medication exposure, overall, there's no increase in the rate of birth defects or complications of pregnancy and delivery. There are some exceptions. One exception is in the combination therapy group among both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis patients. The combination therapy group, there was an increase in the rate of preterm birth. When we look at just Crohn's patients, overall, there's no difference based on medication exposure. But when we looked at ulcerative colitis patients in the combination therapy group, again, the group on biologics and azathioprine or 6MP, we saw an increase in preterm birth, low birth weight, and neonatal intensive care unit stay. Uh, we also saw that women with ulcerative colitis were statistically more likely to have disease activity during pregnancy than women with Crohn's. And this likely explains the increase in complications. I think uh, for patients with inflammatory bowel disease right now, it's a very exciting time because there are a lot of new therapies and some of these are being discussed. One of the new therapies that may come out uh, in end of May, early June is a drug called vetolizumab. So this is a different mechanism of action. So infliximab, adalimumab, and sertolizumab are antibody to uh, tumor necrosis factor. And vetolizumab is a antibody to alpha-4 integrin but it's, and it's specific to, it's more specific to the gut, unlike a similar drug, natalizumab, which is also used in MS. So this drug looked good for both ulcerative colitis and for Crohn's disease without, we think, without the same risk of a brain infection called PML. So that's very exciting. And then they will also be presenting data on fecal microbiota transplant, which is something of great interest to patients where they use stool from a healthy donor and infuse it into the colon of a patient with inflammatory bowel disease to see if it can reverse disease activity. 